I hope the video title got your attention. If this is your first time here, hi, my name is Jen, aka Laurel Evies. I take Homestuck a little too seriously around here, especially when it comes to literary and pop culture allusions and references. I know I give them a hard time, but something I appreciate the Homestuck post-canon team expanding on is the High Bloods, making them one of my favorite troll casts. For the longest time, we only got to take a look at their cast and religious ideals through Gamzee and Kurlos Makara, and that's not saying much. They were silent antagonists through most of the comic, and when they did speak, their dialogue was barely understandable. Granted, I know that Hussey is a jokester, and that he based Gamzee and subsequently every high blood after him around the insane clown posse and juggalo subculture, but I sincerely believe that Hussey and the writing team added a lot more subtle historical nuance to this troll and the Purple Bloods than most people think. This mostly has to do with their religion's attachment to the cult practices of Greece, and... Stop that. It's... I still think it's ridiculous that Earthsea has two Alternia-based religions, let alone one of them honoring the murderous clown messiahs. I get the... I get the point the writers are trying to say, but I respectfully disagree. Christianity's teachings' roots are based on concepts of denying your selfish desires, charity work, doing the right thing even if it's unpleasant for you, and being willing to suffer for believing that Jesus is God, even if it's to the death. What do the clowns die for? Alternia's clown religion is more linked to philosophical hedonism, where you do whatever you want because it feels good. And believe me when I say that the religious practices surrounding Dionysus in particular are more in line with what the High Bloods do than Catholicism. Hopefully you'll see what I mean as I show my reasoning as to why Homestuck's High Bloods and the religion they espouse are more based on the cult of Dionysus, with Gamzee as Dionysus himself. Dionysus is the baby-faced god of wine and winemaking, but if you know your Greek pantheon, you know that they have control over many other aspects as well. For example, Zeus is the god of sky and order, but also is the patron of oaths and hospitality. You might even say he's the best host there is. <clears throat> but yeah, Dionysus is also known as the god of theater, and like many other harvest-related gods of the ancient world, is a god of fertility, if you get what I'm saying. Dionysus is also the god of insanity, possession, religious ecstasy, and the ever-so-casual ritual madness. Oh yeah. Dionysus's myths come up rather late compared to the other gods in Greece, with one of the most well-known being about his conception. In this version, Zeus, poonhound extraordinaire, dons human form and woos the human Semele, getting her pregnant. Pregante. Pregananant. Zeus's wife Hera is furious and decides to get revenge in a rather creative way. After taking human form and befriending Semele, Hera causes Semele to doubt that her boyfriend is actually Zeus. The next time Semele meets up with Zeus, she asks him for proof that he is really the king of the gods. Zeus, the god of oaths, promises on the sticks, and Semele asks him to reveal himself to her in his full glory. And now Semele is in ashes, but you know who isn't dead? The baby that was in her womb. Baby Dionysus is still too preemie to live outside the body, so Zeus does the manliest thing he can think of and sews the demigod into his inner thigh, giving Zeus a limp. Some say that he might have been put a little too close to Zeus's junk. A few months later, Dionysus is born. Again. Hmm. Depending on the tale, Dionysus is either raised on Earth by Hermes, the Muses, or even Rhea, or in Hades by Hades and Persephone. 
and as an adult god, goes on some wacky adventures like discovering wine and getting driven mad, traveling abroad and founding cities in Egypt, India, and Asia, getting kidnapped by pirates and escaping using insanity magic to cover the ship in vines, snakes, and the sound of flutes and turning the pirates into dolphins. Also giving Midas his golden touch. That, that was his fault. Things only get weirder from here on out, as it turns out Dionysus might even be older than some of the Pantheon, with two versions of the same god popping up as early as the 14th century BC. These two pre-Hellenic versions, Orphic and Mycenaean, depict Dionysus with a pair of curving bull horns, on which was laid ivy and snakes. The lesser-known Mycenaean Dionysus even got a beard and long wild hair, and was abandoned to be raised by the wilderness. But if it's even possible, the Orphic Dionysus had the edgiest backstory compared to the other two. In this version, Dionysus is the child of Persephone and Zeus, due to some non-con with Zeus turning into a snake. Ugh. I just felt the Lore Olympus fanbase get shook. The Sunborn is named Dionysus, though in some versions he's called Zagreus. And now I feel the Hades fanbase losing their minds. Anyway, Hera is 10,000 levels of Dun and six the Titans on him. The Titans smearing chalk dust on their faces before proceeding to tear the baby limb from limb. Dionysus attempts to escape by shape-shifting into various animals, including a lion, a wild horse, a horned serpent, a tiger, and finally a bull, but dies and ultimately gets eaten. The only thing left of the baby is his heart, which either gets sewn into Zeus or implanted into Semele, depending on the tale. This ends up reviving Dionysus when he is literally reborn. This is why he's called the Orphic Dionysus. Orphism was the ancient Greek religion centered around themes of death, rebirth, and the Chthonic gods, gods associated with the underworld, as well as beings that traveled between Hades and Earth. Like its namesake, Orpheus. Before he got ripped apart by Dionysus' followers, ooh. That, that's ironic. The whole dying and resurrecting aspect of his character, along with his connection with wine and his father being Zeus, belong to the bearded Mycenaean Dionysus, by the way. They just downplayed the first part in the Hellenistic version. This Dionysus might even predate that myth, since he's linked with a wine cult that might have existed since 6000 BC, with Greece later adopting the practice after changing the mythology to suit their needs. Which brings us to the Cult of Dionysus. We don't know too much about the cult's specific practices, since it was a mystery cult. This is fine, all the cool Chthonic gods get mystery cults. Am I right, Persephone? But super simplified, the worship of Dionysus involved a lot of drinking and the taking of hallucinogens. In the ancient world, getting crazy drunk or high was seen as being possessed by Dionysus, therefore tapping into his power. So Dionysus was the party god, with his followers getting mad drunk, having wild dance parties, sleeping around, and, of course, the ritualistic sacrifices. Dismemberment. A lot of it. Both animal and human. Hi again, Orpheus! Most early Greeks were not exactly cool with Dionysus, since he symbolized chaos, danger, and the unexpected, something you don't really want for a safe society. However, they inevitably were forced to include him into the Pantheon after Athens' current tyrant, Pisistratus, said that those who reject his cult would get a plague to their genitals. This is why during certain Dionysian festivals, people carried around giant phallic symbols. I am serious. Things grow more festive after Alexander the Great comes to power and takes the hedonistic practices to heart, and even later when Rome adopted the cult. Three words. Eating raw flesh. You, you see the connections, right? Let's list them since there's a lot to remember. 
We have a horned, high teenager with crazy hair and affinity for a supposedly intoxicating drink, is associated with madness, practically raised himself, multiple connections to genitalia, access to magics in an attempt to inflict insanity, goes crazy himself, somehow gets more action than the rest of the cast, winds up in places he shouldn't, has underlying violent tendencies, and constantly survives the worst bodily harm or is outright Right, resurrected because you can't kill the clown. Sure, Miss Jen, there are a few connections, but I still don't see it. Oh, I've got more. Dionysus has plenty of symbols connected to him that we haven't even touched. These items and elements are useful to find depictions of him in ancient and classical art, and in our case, for his influence over Gamzee and the other purple bloods. Several big cats are associated with Dionysus. He's shown in myth to be able to transform into a lion and a tiger, sometimes being drawn in a carriage by them. Panthers and leopards are especially common since he's usually portrayed wearing their spotted skin, if clothed at all. In connection to Homestuck, not only does Gamzee wear Nepeta's hat after killing her, Gamzee's pre-scratch clothes include a pair of polka dot pants. Another animal Dionysus could transform into is a bull. In fact, the detail in Orphic myth about being torn apart and killed in bull form is probably why bulls were a common sacrifice next to goats in Dionysian celebrations. Of course, older versions of Dionysus depict him with bull horns to the point where Tauros is considered a surname for him. But there are also myths surrounding Dionysus' boy toy Ampelus, getting gored on horns of a bull. I guess that explains a lot about Gamzee's romantic feelings towards Tavros. Creatures known as satyrs were also known retainers to Dionysus. Known today as goat-like fawns, early depictions of satyrs show them with horse ears, tails, and legs. And everything between said legs. Does this sound familiar to some troll? This could be another reason Equius couldn't stop Gamzee. He was part of his entourage. It probably wouldn't surprise you to hear that snakes are associated with Dionysus as well. Many of his myths include snakes, including him being adorned with them. Add that he was possibly raised by Hermes and the Muses, and the idea of Gamzee caring for Calliope makes a lot of sense. He's just paying them back for Dionysus. Another surprising thing associated with Dionysus is trees. He is a fertility god after all. And if you remember that the umbrage in Undying Umbrage refers to the shadow of a tree, Caliborn is accounted for too. One element that is purely associated with Dionysus is his Thyrsus, a wand or staff made of fennel, ivy, berries, and pine cones. While harmless in religious ceremonies, in myth, Dionysus could turn the Thyrsus staffs into deadly weapons in the hands of his followers. Gamzee's clubs, anyone? Okay, that might be a bit of a stretch, but you know what isn't? The choice to design Friend Sims Barzum and Basilie Soleil's Sock and Buskin masks, aka the comedy and tragedy masks. In Greek theater, the funny comedic characters wore the smiling sock, and the tragic characters would wear the frowning buskin. Wow, we should have seen that coming. Greek theater derived from Dionysus' festivals, and masks were often worn by the followers of Dionysus' cult. Speaking of followers, some of the most crazed devotees of Dionysus' mythological entourage were the Maenads. This all-female band of ravers are often shown dancing, playing instruments, or killing people. Most notably, they killed Orpheus because he refused to honor Dionysus. This might explain why the pious high blood, literally named Chow Maynad, is barely keeping her bloodthirsty nature at bay around our blasphemous protagonists. Okay, Miss Jen. You might have a point. A good chunk of the clowns do seem to fall under the Greek wine cult label. What about Carico? Okay, I have no idea what the deal is with this precious baby, and that scares me a whole lot. But, I mean, he acts as the possessed mouthpiece to the Dark Carnival in Pester Quest after he 
lives or dies in Friendsim. So that counts, right? Sure, sure. But what about your clown bay? My what? Marvis Xoloto. How does your beautiful clown prince fit into all of this? Uh, yes, Marvis. <sighs> the most chill of the clowns in all of Hussey's creation. He totally fits in with the cult as well. Besides being a gifted musician, which falls somewhere between Apollo and Dionysus worship, the thing that connects Marvis most with Dionysus is dolphins. You heard me. Dolphins. Post-canon director and writer Aisha Yufara said that Marvis's Lucis is a land dolphin. Dionysus turned a ship full of pirates into dolphins when they tried to kidnap him. Pretty cut and dry, really. So with all that, what do you guys think? Do you think Gamzee and the Highbloods are Dionysian in origin? Or is this all Greek to you? Leave a comment below and be sure to like and share with a homestuck friend. If you haven't seen Overly Sarcastic's Dionysus video, I highly suggest you do. Red and Blue's videos in general are super fun and educational. One last thing, I hope to find more subjects like this to talk about in Homestuck videos in the future. And there may be even more Homestuck-esque related videos coming out soon. So make sure you're subscribed and have the notifications on so you can stay notified. Because YouTube likes to unsubscribe people from time to time. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Hey there. Consider becoming a patron, just like the phenomenal Bleed Red, Alexander Madelin, Uranium Coffee, Ryan Nelson, and our newest supporter, Brundar. This level of support? In this economy? My figurative hats off to you, Brundar.